Jim has been a major force in the development of clinical cardiology in the United States over m so many decades now. Jim has led pioneering investigations over a remarkable career spanning nearly five decades. And he is uh, literally a household word in the field of cardiology, not only nationally, but internationally. Jim's greatest accomplishments have been in the field of clinical investigation in cardiovascular disease. Hemodynamic subsets using the Swan-Gans catheter, a very classic paper he wrote in New England Journal of Medicine that changed the way we thought about critically ill cardiac patients. And subsequently, in collaboration with George Diamond, Jim was one of the first people to use Bayesian analysis for uh, cardiovascular testing to define their accuracy and value. And later on, uh, in the early 80s, Jim also helped develop the concept of angioscopy, where a tiny fiber octa catheter was inserted into the coronary arteries to visualize the pathology of the coronary arteries during an acute heart attack. That was uh, another kind of a seminal uh, investigation that Jim was involved in. They could uh, put in these catheters and exactly measure in numbers the heart failure status or lack of thereof. And Jim um, was known all around the world for the forest classification of um, the heart function after a myocardial infarction. And you could uh, pretty much predict as to who is going to do how well or how bad in subsequent months and years based upon this classification. And for, for in our field in cardiology, um, he's a legacy. These terms that he's created um, in medicine, especially in cardiology, will never be forgotten. And still 20, 30 years ag uh, later, we still talk about those subsets hemodynamic subsets of myocardial infarction. One of Jim's major lasting contributions had to do with the way doctors approach patients regarding whether they need tests. He worked with George Diamond in development of what's called the Diamond Forrester classification of the likelihood of coronary disease. And it taught everybody that we don't order tests on all patients, but we do it by classifying the likelihood of them having an abnormal test, which then gives us better guidance as to whether there'll be any benefit from doing the testing at all. I would describe Jim Forrester as, uh, first of all, um, um, an eclectic individual with broad interests, highly intelligent, highly articulate, slightly goofy, and a fun guy to hang out with. So Jim combines uh, very high intellect um, with uh, being just a regular guy. He likes to hang out, he likes sports, loves his family. Uh, really, really good guy, decent human being. Uh, I, think, I think his greatest contribution actually has been mentoring dozens and dozens of young physicians and young investigators. Uh, and, um, you know, contributions with respect to a specific um, field of medicine often come and go as they're surpassed by other observations and new technologies. But helping to nurture and develop the careers of literally dozens of young cardiologists who've not only stayed in the States, but who've gone all over the world, that's a contribution that I think he should be very proud of. And very few people um, can actually uh, make claim to that. Jim was the mentor that uh, everybody hopes they could find somewhere early in their career. Uh, when I met Jim, I didn't really know anything about how to do research, how to write research up, how to present research, uh, how to position research in the world of academia. Jim uh, took uh, me under his wing and tutored me literally uh, in hand-to-hand -hand, uh, discussions where he would sit with me and go over manuscripts, teach me how to write, teach me how to give talks, how to put slides together. Um, and he subsequently became uh, not only a mentor, but a very close personal friend. Um, much of um, my career in academics and in research, I owe to Jim Forster. That's a great gift to have that kind of ability to not only spot, but to encourage young people to dare uh, break the barriers 
be a trailblazer with him. You know, it's amazing. I think being a true pioneer in the field the, means a lot to me that he is able to lead um, by example and then help young uh, people to think um, out of the box. I came there and he was assigned to be my mentor, which was possibly the luckiest thing that ever happened to me in medicine. Uh, Jim was doing some very important research on hemodynamic subsets and the Swan-Gans catheter, which later became the foundation of what we used to treat the sickest of sick patients in those days, many of whom didn't survive. And we, I still use it today in my practice on patients who pretty much all survive, largely because of the work that Jim did. Uh, Jim just likes everybody he meets and uh, looks for something good in them. If I had to use one word, I would say integrity. He was, all his research has been honest. What Jim did was essentially catapulted the careers of several young people into prominence. Jim has won a number of awards. Um, he won the ACC, which is the American College of Cardiology Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, it is one of the most prestigious awards won by people such as Dr. Eugene Braunwald and Dr. Patrick Soroyce. That uh, basically is a tribute to his overall contributions in the field of cardiology over the last several decades. And I have to say I was struck by the fact that, that despite the fact uh, Jim was a big person in the field of cardiology, he was one of the giants, how approachable he was. Uh, it was easy to approach Jim, to go into his office anytime and discuss any problem related to cardiology, whether it was related to a research project or regarding a patient. When I was working with Jim and I was a lowly uh, second year fellow, uh, I had a, um, a death in the family, a personal tragedy uh, close to me. And um, I'll never forget, because I really didn't know Jim that well at the time. I was a second year fellow. Uh, Jim actually drove his jalopy over to my apartment and came over and stayed with me and took me to the airport because um, I had to leave. And I thought that, you know, for somebody who at that time, his stature relative to my stature, there was a, a large gap. It was, I thought, extraordinarily human and decent of him uh, to take that level of interest. And I never forgot that. He probably has forgotten it, but I never forgot it. Jim is a very refined individual with great mastery of language. In addition, he is a real gentleman in the old sense of the word and a remarkably kind, giving, and deferential human being. And pretty much self-deprecating, even though he is one of the best known names in the field of cardiovascular medicine. Jim, I believe, is, is uh, uh, basically a very, very humble guy, and uh, probably because he perceives as well as anyone I've known our place in the universe. <laughs> uh, I believe he understands himself maintaining that intellectual honesty in all things, both with regard to his research, which of course it's an essential component of being able to be a scientist and, uh, and coming out with the right answer as opposed to a biased answer. But he has applied that same discipline to himself in all things. And uh, that's the unique thing about um, Jim. If I were to advise young doctors, I'd say find your passion and pursue it. And I did. I found my passion in medicine and in family, and I pursued both of those. And I think that if you really invest in those things about which you are passionate, you are sooner or later going to succeed had a major impact on the practice of cardiology in the United States. Uh, he has these outstanding qualities that have brought him to that point. He is a, an innovator. Uh, and he doesn't back away from challenge. 
He solves clinically relevant problems. Uh, he's a thinker. He is uh, an orator. Jim's talks are phenomenal. They have great impact. He's a tremendous writer uh, and uh, a person who's dedicated his career to doing the right thing for patients in, with heart disease worldwide. When the history of cardiology is written, I'm sure uh, Jim would be quoted again and again and again as a very able communicator who could distill the fine products of years of research in many fields, whether it is wall motion, whether it is heart failure, whether it is exercise testing. Uh, he could uh, be considered as one of the true pioneers of cardiology.